Welcome to another worship experience with Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Today our preacher is Pastor Wayne Henry of the Saxthorp Congregation. Please have your Bibles and hymn books ready to share in this time of worship. And today we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. So I encourage you to get your elements ready to participate at the appropriate time. May your time with us be a blessing. call to worship we come to worship God confidently declaring that he is with us loving God direct us to worship you in spirit and in truth God of all time and eternity journey with us always as we look to you the author and finisher of our faith Give thanks to the Lord. For his mercy endures forever. We now sing together the hymn 302. Thine forever God of love. We will now have our opening prayer, which will be led by Sister Natasha Vassal. Let us now pray the prayer of adoration. Lord God Almighty, you created the universe and all the intricate details in it. We are in awe of the fact that you took time in the beginning to think of us, your children, and as your word says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So generous God, we know you have given us more than our fair share of your goodness. You have cared for our material and emotional needs. You have forgiven us and welcomed us back when we went astray. You have shown us how to love unconditionally. Gracious God, 
we come to praise and worship your holy name, acknowledging that you have given us so much to be used to your honor and glory. Today, we worship as the great I am who cares, who guides, who protects, and who never fails. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, as your friends, you have given us various gifts and talents to be used to your honor and glory. But instead of following your commands, we put trust in our own strength and reject your grace. Have mercy on us, O God, and keep us close to you. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us for the times when we have not been so busy enjoying ourselves or for the time we have followed our own ideas and pretended that you were not there by sides. Forgive us for our moments when we have not used the time you have given us to do your will. Have mercy on us, O God, and keep us close to you. Lord Jesus Christ, direct us to show love and forgiveness to our brothers and sisters. Teach us how we should live as we travel this pilgrim pathway. Help us to understand that it is in loving others that we can better love you, O oh God. The Assurance of Pardon Just as the prodigal son's father ran out to welcome and forgive him, in the same way we know you forgive. Welcome and love all who seek you out. People of God, receive this assurance. God loves and forgives you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Let us now pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who reassures us with the words, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Faithful God, we thank you for directing us to take the road that leads to eternal life with you. Thank you for your presence that encourages us to use our time to honor you. We wait with grateful hearts, expecting to hear you say to us, come unto me, continue to use us for your glory at all times and in all places. This we pray. Amen. Good morning to my dear children and young people. At this time, I want to talk to you specifically, but of course, with whatever message I have at this time is a message for all of us. The question I want to begin with is, do you use your time wisely? The story is told of a successful executive who one afternoon decided that he would leave work early, go home and relax and spend his time before his television watching some nice movie. He decided that to make things even more comfortable for him, he would stop at the super just down the road and buy some nice snacks that he could snack on during that time. Now, when he went into the superit, he felt this urge within him that became stronger and stronger to buy a quart of milk. Now, he thought to himself and he said, but we don't really need any milk at home. I can't understand why I feel this way. But anyway, he went and he bought the milk. And then he decided that it was a time of the day when the normal route home would be filled with a lot of traffic. So he decided to take a shortcut through an area that is well known for various atrocities. But as he journeyed on and he was coming down this particular avenue that seemed quiet and deserted, all of a sudden, a stone seemed to come out of nowhere and smash 
his side glass in his wonderful car given to him by the company that he cherished so much. So of course at that moment he came to an abrupt stop and he jumped out and as he jumped out he saw this little boy run off and he ran after him. When he actually caught up with him, he caught up with him just as the boy opened the door to his little shack. And there inside he noticed a mother with a crying baby. When he stopped to inquire what was going on, still fuming at the fact that the glass was broken from his car and he, he wanted to discipline this young man and even make a spectacle of him. But he stopped to inquire what was going on. And then the little boy simply said to him, Sir, I am sorry that I broke your car glass, but my baby sister needs something because she is very hungry and we have no money to buy anything for her. At that moment, all the fury dripped out of the man as he then became so sympathetic to the situation. And so instead of just giving the quart of milk, he went and he bought some groceries and he gave to that family. And then from then on, he used time that he would actually use sitting before the television, going around the community to help others. Dear friends, we live in a time, a crucial time, where there are several within our communities that need help. Want to use your time wisely. The time that God has given to you to bring honor and glory to his holy name as you reach out to others. In Jesus' name, amen. The collect for the day. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, by whose command we become your messengers, and whose grace enables us to give you the service and time that is acceptable in your sight, make us ever sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit that we may heed your call and make ready and worthy response of our lives to you, O God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have our Old Testament lesson, which comes to us from First Chronicles 29, verse 10 to verse 13. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, 
and is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading for today is Psalm 24, and it can be found at number 580 in the back of our Voices in Praise, Words Only Edition. We read alternative verses and we repeat the Gloria together. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place. Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory, glory be, to the, be Father, to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. Today's epistle comes to us from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, and I read from verse 1. To verse 11. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made, made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We will now sing together the hymn number 315, A Charge to Keep I Have. Change my 
The scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, reading verse 14 through to 30. Glory to you, O Christ. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The, then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done. Good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all who, those who have, to those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of Christ. Glory to you, O Christ. Alle, alle, alle. At this time, we will have a special selection entitled Stewardship, which will be done by the choir.
now we will have the servant of the Lord, Pastor Wayne Henry, bring to us the message that God has laid on his heart. So I want to speak today for a few minutes on stewardship. Stewardship is defined as the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. We read in the gospel of Matthew 25 and in verse 14 in the parable that Jesus told, it says the master called his servants and entrusted his property to them. And to entrust is to commit with confidence, to give in the charge of another. And so as we speak of stewardship, we think of the Lord who is, the scripture says in Psalm 24 and verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Romans 11 and verse 36 says, From him, through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. First Chronicles 29 and verse 14 says, For all things, Lord, come from you, and of your own have we given you. And this is when David was collecting and he gave up his own treasure towards the building, the restoration of the temple of the Lord. And the people were prompted, their hearts prompted them to give. And David was saying, Lord, all that we have given is really yours. And we're speaking of stewardship, that God, the resources, all that we have need of, God has given unto us. He has entrusted unto us. And we are called to give an account as faithful stewards. A resource, brethren, is something that lies ready for use or can be drawn upon for aid or assistance. So the dictionary says a resource is something that lies ready for use and can be drawn upon for aid or assistance. And there are many types of resources. Money is a resource. Time is a resource. Your talents, your skills, your abilities, the giftings that God has given you, those are resources and they all belong to God. And so we have to be careful that we manage these resources properly. Interestingly, in the parable we read, it says, He gave to one five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his ability. So it's important, brethren, that we don't, we don't look at other people and compare ourselves to other people. God has given you all you need. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says, His divine power has given us all we need for life and for godliness. One translation says, He's given us everything we need to live a godly life through our knowledge of Him who calls us by His own glory and goodness. So God has given us these resources. And we have to understand then. Let me say three things in the interest of time. One, you must respect the resource that God has given you. Respect our resources. You have to respect money. You have to respect time. Respect the gifts that God has given you. Some people are blessed with, with you know, can sing tremendously. Think of Sister Maria and Sister Lucetta. And so all the, all the, sick, the songsters. <laughs> And they are gifted that way. Some persons are, are gifted by the Spirit of the Lord. And they are able to preach. We can speak. I mean speak publicly and so on. That's the gifting of God. And, and I'll suggest brethren. One that we have to respect our resource. What you do not respect can be mismanaged. What you do not respect can be lost or stolen from you. If you do not respect money. Chances are you won't. You'll be wondering, where, where's the money gone? <laughs> if you don't respect time, you would find that you don't have enough time to do what, even though all of us are gifted with the same 24 hours, if you don't have a respect for time. You know, when, when you, you come late for something and don't apologize, and it says that you don't respect the people who are waiting on you. You have to respect time. People, you know, people waiting an hour and two hours. Yeah, you don't respect the people's time. You have to respect the resource you have. The gifts, and, and you must honor the gift, and you must give yourself. We're going to speak about that. How you give yourself to developing what God has given. And importantly, notice that I said you must respect money. I didn't say you must love money. The scripture says in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. The Bible doesn't say we must love money. That's greed. 
Covetousness. It says it's the love of money that it's the root of evil. But you must respect money. Ecclesiastes suggests that money answers all things. Money is a resource that can be given to help. In the church, the body of Christ, money comes to help in the administration, the running of the church, the promulgation, the spreading of the gospel will take resources, money included. So you have to respect money. But as Hebrew 13, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. So brethren, I'm not saying to love money, but you must respect it. Similarly, you must respect time. Two, determine to honor, honor God with your resource. Make up your mind to honor God with your resource. Proverbs 3 verses 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your increase. And then shall your barns be filled with plenty. Can I suggest, brethren, it's a principle that anything you have, if you determine to honor God, if you say, I'm going to honor God with my time, you'll find out that things fall into place. When we were in college at UWE and then later on going on to grad school, sometimes when the exam times came around, we wondered, boy, would we have enough time? We have, we have to study and there's so much going on. Would we have time to go to church? Would we have time for Bible study? Would we have time to spend with the Lord? And we made a decision that as we would spend time with God, we just said, well, we have to spend time with God. And funny enough, as you would spend what you thought was a limited time, you spend time with God and all of a sudden you had time to study. God gave you insight into what to study. The peace of God was there, the confidence. And because we, gave, we honored God even with our time. Hmm. And so let's make up our mind as a principle that we would honor God with our resources. The Bible says Cain gave God some of the fruits of his land. But the Bible says Abel gave God the best portions of his livestock. He determined to honor God with his best. Of the resources that God gave, he determined to give the best. When it says honor the Lord with the your, your increase and the first fruits, the first fruits speaks of in first importance, the things that come up first, the most important part, and that was given to God. And that's important, brethren. Sometimes in our devotion, we wake up and, and it's, and, and you know, you may have a night job, you may have different commitments in your own time. And we say it's important to spend time with God. If you can, it's good to start your day with in devotion that you set your day as it were in order but obviously for some people they can't do that it may not be convenient and so but the important thing is to spend time but there's something about the quality given the first fruits of what you have that's why we give the tithe those we are called as the believers that we give to the work of the lord 10 percent jacob said of all that you give me lord i will give you 10 percent and the bible says god increased jacob blessed him richly because jacob was faithful that anything god put in his hand he would give back to God so that's important so one respect your resource two determine to honor God with your resource three have a plan to manage and develop that resource have a plan for your money if you don't have a plan for your money that's called a budget if you don't have a plan somebody said if you fail to plan you plan to fail that's that saying we have here in Jamaica I'm sure other places. So have a plan because what that does, the plan begins to manage. The plan begins to direct. The plan says for your money, this is where it is going. This portion is going for that. I'm saving this amount. This is going for that. I'm paying the bills because I'm obligated. I've used the service and I have to pay for it. And, and that's what the, the budget does. It plans. And similarly with your time, plan the time. And so well, I'm going to allocate this time to that. For these two hours, I'm going to set aside for this. I'm going to spend this time with the Lord. You know, and you must plan it. To manage it, to direct it, to give directions to that resource. Because if not, you will find that your time is gone. You wonder where. Or people come and they mean well, you hadn't seen them in a while, but they end up wasting time. You end up, you know, there's a time for everything. And somehow you did not allot and allocate the right time for that right thing. And then it is gone. So we must have a plan to manage our time. And, and we think of prioritizing. Yes, we have to do things, but not everything has equal importance. Learn to prioritize. First things first. You have five assignments, student. And one is due Monday, one is due Tuesday, one is due Wednesday. Don't focus all on the Friday one. And then Monday come and realize you didn't spend time preparing for the Monday one. You may have enough time to do the Friday one. So learn to prioritize. And that's important. 
The scripture says, Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I like to call that the time management scripture. Lord, teach us to number our days in a right way, that we may gain wisdom. And, and implicit in that is that in the numbering of my days, I'm giving God time to learn him, to learn of his ways, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Teach me, God, how to organize my time that I might have wisdom, because wisdom only comes from the Lord. So implicit in that is saying that you give me wisdom, I spend time with you, you download ideas, and you give me order, and I can walk it out. Hmm. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Time is a resource, and we want to be careful that we don't waste time. The scripture says in Ephesians 5, 16, make the most of every opportunity. One translation says, redeem the time because the days are evil. But I like the other one that says, make most, the most of every opportunity. Student, don't waste time in school. Make the most of the opportunity. Some people love the opportunity to be in school and don't have that opportunity to make the most of it. I used to teach at UA, lecture at UA, and I would set exams for the courses. And I wouldn't administer it. There were invigilators to administer the exam. But I would go at the start of an exam. Sometimes they would pray and start the session. I would be there in case anybody needs any questions clarified or so. But I would be present, and I found that my presence would help to reassure students. I don't know why. <laughs> and, so, and so I would be there, and then I would leave after maybe 15, 20 minutes into the exam, the exam is two hours, for example, and I'll come back before the exam is ended. So that if anybody wanted to see me, um, wanted to threaten me, no, it's just a bad joke. If anybody wanted to talk to me afterwards, then I could be present. And I remember coming in this one exam before they were finished and looking at the students, everybody was, it was quiet, people were writing. And then the invigilator, the chief invigilator said, that is it, time is up. Put down your pencils, put down your pens and turn in your paper. And one student, I remember, the tears just began to come down the face. And the implication is it's too late. Time has ended. There may come a time, Jesus said, let us work while it is still day, for the night is coming when no man can work. When, Mo, when Noah was building the ark, they ridiculed him. But as the rain began to come now, the ark door was shut. Too late. There was a time when they could have made amends to come in. But like the bridegroom, as the bridegroom came back, the foolish virgins found out that time was up. So we have to make the most. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 12 and verse 32, sorry, says that of the men who came to Ziklag to make David king of the clans, they were the sons of Issachar. And it says these were men who had an understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do. We ask, have to ask God for discernment that we can understand the times we are in and to know what is appropriate. What should we do at this time? How do we make the most of every opportunity? How do we redeem the time? And we ask God for that. That's important. That's important. And so, finally, brethren, we say we must respect our resources, determine to honor God with our resources, have a plan to manage and develop our resource. And finally, put it to use. Put your resource to use. The servant who received one talent buried it and was rebuked by the master. Notice that the servant who received two talents received the same commendation from the master as the servant who received the five. Because it's each according to his ability. So it's not a matter if somebody says, well, if I was multi-talented, I could do all this. No, if you have one gift, God will use that one gift and transform those around by that one gift. God will give you one idea and bless your life through that one God-given idea. So it's not the quantum of what you, you don't have. God is interested in what you have, not in what you don't have. And so put it to use. Come on, look at somebody and say, put it to use. Put it to work. Put it to work. God will bless your effort. The scripture says as a priest in Joshua 3 were carrying the ark. And as they stepped on the water's edge, the water's parted. Sometimes you just have to step out and God will move on your behalf. In 2 Kings 7, the lepers who were outside the famine, the famine city, Samaria. And they, they sat there, three lepers, and they said, why sit we here and die? 
If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, the famine is there, we'll die. Let us arise and go into the enemy's camp. Let's step out. And the Bible says, as they arose, look at somebody and say, rise up. As they arose, God moved on their behalf and caused the enemy, the Ar Arameans, to hear what sounded like many chariots and horses. But it was just a few lepers. But you have to put what you have to work. Step out. Put it to work. Little, you may say, I don't have much, brother Wayne. Little is much if you invite God. If you give it over to God, he will bless he will bless. In John 6, in the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus wanted to feed the crowds. And they said, well, there's nothing here except there's just a five loaves and two fish. But how far can that go among so many? Oh, give the loaves and the fish to Jesus. Because if you allow him to take it and bless it, if you allow him to take your gift and bless it, if you give him a life and he blesses it, he will do much with what you may think is little. My servant, was, my husband was a servant of, of God and one of the prophets and he died and he's left us indebted said the widow to the prophet Elisha please help us because the creditors are coming to take my sons as payment if you think banks nowadays have serious collection plan you must check back in those times he's taking the sons as payment for the debt and Elijah said to her tell me what do you have in your home and she says I have nothing except a little oil you know the story, 2 Kings chapter 4. And the Bible says he told her, borrow vessels, there's not a few, borrow many vessels. And, and the Bible says as she poured what she thought was a little oil, God blessed it. And as many vessels as she poured in, they were filled. Little is much when you allow God. God will ask Moses, Exodus 4, Moses, what is in your hand? And God is asking you, what has I, have I blessed you with? What resources, what talents do you have? Let us, as we close, think of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 5. The Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Corinth about giving. And he says, you know about the Macedonian church. The Macedonian church, he said, the grace of God was so much on them that out of their poverty, they didn't have much. But they first gave themselves to God. And out of their small resources began to give an offering for the other churches. And God blessed it. And it has become a fragrant aroma to the Lord. Notice the principle, they first gave themselves to the Lord and God blessed and they were able to give. Brethren, let us give ourselves in a fresh way to the Lord as we step up, as we rise up in stewardship. Many areas we are called to be stewards in. And let us give ourselves, respect the resources that God has blessed us with. Let us determine to honor God with our resources. Let us have a plan to manage, to develop the resource. Yes, you are good in that thing, but give yourself to training and more, becoming even better for the glory of God. And let us put it to use for his glory. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in the area of stewardship. Forgive us where we, if we haven't been good stewards. Have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us for poor stewardships and help us Lord to redeem the time help us to make up Lord to make the most of opportunities we pray that we would rise up from our slumber as it were we would shake ourselves in determination to stand and to be used for your glory thank you for grace it's your grace your unmerited favor that brings us near be glorified in all our lives. We offer our bodies unto you. All that you've given unto us, we give to you. And we say, Father, use us for your glory. Be lifted up that men may be drawn unto you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will now sing together the hymn number 311. Lord, in the strength of grace. Lord, in the strength.
We thank you, our worshipers, for making your financial support to the ministries of the local churches. Now, as a church community, we are involved in sharing care packages to homebound members and community residents and other care programs of the church. Do continue your good work. Please contact your class leaders and local church office for opening hours and banking information to make your weekly tithes and offering. We invite you, your support for this ministry on television. And to make your contributions, please call 876-925-6768 or 876-924-1218 or make deposit as displayed on your screen. Let us now give God thanks. Oh, Father in heaven, we bless your holy name on this wonderful day for your goodness to us, your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you, O oh God, for providing for us in the wonderful ways that you have. And now as we offer you these, our gifts of money, we pray your blessing on these gifts, that these gifts will be used to honor your holy name. So continue, Lord, to provide for us, continue to guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Or prayers of intercession. Let us pray. God of love, life, and time, we praise you for the gifts you have given us. Teach us to use these gifts in a special way as we reach out to all with reverence and respect. Renew us, O oh God, as we seek to strengthen and uphold all those whose humanity has been degraded in the exercise of power, greed, and selfishness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our wisdom and inspiration, we praise you for sending your spirit to lead us in the way of faith. Keep us awake and alert to your presence in the world and in those we meet day by day. And as we wrestle with the COVID-19 pandemic, help us to remain steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will now share in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. As we share at the table of our Lord the thanksgiving lift up your hearts we lift them up unto the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and fitting so to do father all-powerful and ever-living God it is indeed right it is our joy and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in the everlasting hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with them and they with me. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was broken for us, preserve us unto everlasting life. We now take and eat and are thankful. Amen. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for us, we now take and drink and are thankful. Amen. Now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all and our loved ones everywhere, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us now sing together the hymn number 306, Fourth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go.
receive the benediction. May God, the Father of time and eternity, be with us. May God, the Son who feels our pain and knows our tears, journey with us. May God, the Holy Spirit, inspire us and give us renewed hope for now and always. Amen.